Hi there, and thanks for tuning in to Shine Bright Homeschool. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Click that bell for notifications so you will get notified when I drop more videos about many different fifth and sixth grade curriculum books. Today I'm reviewing Masterbooks Elementary Anatomy. We are starting this for our school year and I'm really impressed with the content of this curriculum and I wanted to really share it with you so you could take a deeper look inside. This curriculum comes with three different books. One is on the circulatory system, the respiratory system, and the nervous system. So it's really good for an elementary overview of the main systems in the body. And we're gonna look into each book today to kind of really give you an idea if this curriculum is a good fit for you. Just so you know, Masterbooks recommends that this is a fourth through sixth grade curriculum. My son is in sixth grade because we focused a lot on earth science the past couple years. So I really wanted to give my 11 year old son more of a look about the human anatomy and start to get him think about eating healthy and what things to do and why does your body react a certain way. And so far I highly recommend this. So let's take a deeper look inside and see if it works for you. So taking a look here at the Master Books Elementary Anatomy. This covers the fourth through sixth grade, which is a pretty broad spectrum for me when it comes to education for kids. It really depends on your kid and what they're interested in, what they're comfortable with, what you are comfortable teaching them based off their age. Now, these are only gonna focus on the respiratory system, nervous system, and circulatory system. So here, you're not overwhelmed by other details of the body that might be more for a later grade. We're actually gonna look at the nervous system first because this is the book starts out the year with. So here in the Electrifying the Nervous System book, the table of contents show the basics of the nervous system, the anatomy and physiology of the nervous system, things about the brain, things about the backbone, health facts about your nervous system, facts that are wacky, weird, and wow. Then this is about the author, and she's a doctor. I like this too, so this is breaking down vocabulary terms for you and your child. This is gonna be based off what your child can handle at their age. If you feel like, if it's something that you know they're gonna be interested in, then maybe fourth and fifth grade would really be a good place to start. So here it talks about historical points about the nervous system. I love that they give like this timeline here which is super helpful, scans and MRIs and such done and what those individual things do. This talks about obviously the nerves in the spinal cord. This is really talking about the you know, nervous system in the brain, which is really cool. This talks about how a baby in the womb has the development after conception, what happens to their brain and the nervous system inside up to even birth, infancy, teenage years, and adulthood, which I think is really cool for a child to kind of see the progression of growth in the human body in that way. Again, it's more of a breakdown of the spinal cord here, which I think is super helpful. So this is like talking about the nervous system and like sleep and how sleep obviously affects your nervous system and your brain. It talks about dreaming and yawning. It talks here about foods for the brain, which I think is really helpful as well. This talks about the breakdown of careers in neuroscience, which is really awesome. And so that's it for this book. Now we're gonna move on to the next one, which is the respiratory system. So here's the breathtaking respiratory system book. So here your table of contents is why do we breathe, the history of the respiratory system, the structure of the respiratory tract, the lower respiratory tract, ventilation, respiration, the development of the lungs, technology and health and fitness. So let's look inside the same author for all three books, so you have that consistency across the board. Again, same as the first book, it has those vocabulary terms, which are, again, super helpful that you can have that reference as you go through the book. <clears throat> this is pertaining to the history of breathing, what people have done to help the respiratory system. You see here it's breaking down the upper respiratory tract. Talks about the details of the nose and how we breathe, the sinuses, here again, it goes back to the development of a baby from 12 weeks old in the womb, what the development is with the lungs. And it goes on to talk about health and wellness and things we can do to keep our lungs healthy, things that are a danger to our lungs and the health of our lungs. 
Here it talks about different type of sicknesses throughout the years and how it affected the respiratory system and what things were done about it at those times. Here's again going into very interesting questions that kids would ask, like why can a fish breathe underwater and we can't? How do insects breathe? So it's kind of just putting in some other really cool facts in there. And then lastly is the complete circulatory system. So here, let's take a look. Our table of contents here is the historical timeline of the circulatory system, blood, highways of blood, blood sucking critters, okay. Getting to the heart of the matter. In the beginning, how the development of the heart is, technology that helps the heart, good health for the heart. Again, same doctor here, who's the author. Here's your vocabulary words for the circulatory system. I like this, it talks about biblical references to the heart, you know, the, like that God knew about the heart, how it had a purpose and how it affects basically our whole being. We wouldn't be in existence without our heart. And I like that it brings up these verses for us to focus on. Then it goes into the timeline of the different viewpoints of the circulatory system throughout the centuries. Here it talks about the functions of the blood and what the blood does, what its purposes are, what it's used for. Here it's going over like the white and red blood cells. It talks about different blood types here, which is super important. Here's that blood sucking critters page. Whew. Okay, that's gross. Here's the breakdown of the heart and how all the blood goes through it, the different parts and chambers of the heart. Again, it's going back to the developmental stage of the heart in a baby um, after conception. Here it's talking about like different surgeries and life-saving procedures that are done. Then it goes on to give like all these tips about the different colors of the food we have and why it's very helpful to our bodies. And here's some of your questions here about why do people pass out at the sight of blood? Hmm, that would be me. What effect do chest compressions have in CPR? Lastly, here is your teacher guide. Then it goes over to the breakdown of your daily schedules for each three of these books. And you can just follow them as you wish. It gives you a four day plan. And then you take that fifth day to either review or go over any projects that you might wanna to do together. They also have a supply list for any activities that you wanna do, which is super helpful. So you know ahead of time what supplies that you need. Here's an example of your daily activity pages. Some of them are questions or answering like in a paragraph here. Sometimes it's in reference to timeline, so it wants you to work on the timeline that is involved with the nervous system, circulatory system, or respiratory system. Here's a word scramble. Again, some of these questions may be a little advanced for your child. I have some activity pages where I might not have my 11 year old do, let's say, this type of activity. But some of these activities would actually be better for your fourth or fifth grader. So just keep that in mind that some of these activities do vary a little bit. Some questions are harder than others. For each book, it's giving you the breakdown of the timeline and Bible verse reference or other activities here that you can do together. And then here in the back is where you're gonna have your answers as a teacher. It'll show you the worksheet number and then the question numbers and answers here. So I did wanna mention that there are actually tests. So you do have unit tests with these free books that you can use to kind of see how your, your worksheets and your activity sheets are helping your child absorb the information. So the exams, which you use for all three books, and then you can just see that you can just tear it right off easily and give that to them. All these activity pages can be gently torn out and given to the student as well. Behind the worksheet and activity answers, you have the unit test answer keys as well for you. Well, thanks for tuning in today. I hope this really helped you figure out if this curriculum is a good fit for you and your family. I really am looking forward 
forward to diving into it more this year. I may do a video at the end of the school year to give you kind of a revised opinion as we go through this whole year and I really see the things I like and don't like about it. Well, that's it on the Masterbooks Elementary Anatomy curriculum. I hope this really helped you kind of narrow down if this is a curriculum that would work good for you and your children. Again, thanks so much for watching today. I hope this video helped you. Make sure that you click the like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Make sure you click the bell, that way you get notified when I release my next video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.